that this middle point right here is kind of where the building stops. So from the, uh, the corner of the building that we're looking at right now on the right side to the edge of the image is about, let's say that's uh, one third the way across the entire image span. And we're going to divide that in half. So I'm going to draw a little dotted line there. And our building is going to stop here. So from the corner of our building down to here, it's going to stop right about here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my straight edge so I can make this as accurate as possible. I'm going to have it intercept the point where the, the top of the building is. And it's going to go all the way down to this place we've decided, based on our own perception, is the uh, first vanishing point. Joseph, sorry yeah. to interrupt. I, I, start, I forgot to start recording until just about a minute ago. Could you just go over a little bit again where you put that first point and the corner of the building and how you block in some of the things? Oh, sure. Okay, so to start off with our two-point perspective drawing, I'm just going to kind of break this down into all its constituent parts because we're going over some things we learned before and also some new things that are, are more of a a less rigid form of drawing. So the first thing I did was I looked at my drawing I'm basing my drawing off of, or this photograph I'm basing my drawing off of, and I'm just blocking in the main elements that are not following any real discernible uh, rules of perspective. So this ground here, some of these branches, I just went ahead and drew those where I believe they are relative to the building. Now, the actual building itself, this corner we're looking at on the right side of the building is what's going to delineate where the uh, lines of perspective are going. So all of the, uh, the different parts of the building on the right side that's darker here are going to be going to a point somewhere around in the bottom right hand corner. And just by judging this image, it looks like the, the, uh, our first vanishing point on the horizon, which we can't see in this image, would be right about one quarter the way up, maybe a little bit less. And that's going to be right about here. So all of these lines on the right side of the building are going to be going to a dot here behind the building that we're not exactly seeing, but we're, we're aware that it's definitely having an effect on the building, or at least our perception of it. And so we know essentially where our second point is and where the horizon line is. Now I have to start actually uh, blocking the building. So we know the top of the building is about, I'm going to say maybe one, one fifth the way up from the bottom of the image. And I will put a point there. And I'm going to draw a line that intercepts and stops at the top of the building down to the place we've decided based on our own perception of reality is probably where the vanishing point is. So right now I'm just going to start blocking that in. I'm going to make sure it stops right about here because in the image it doesn't go all the way down. Next, and this part is going to be a little bit trickier because our second or our first vanishing point in the image is not on uh, it's not visible to us. It's somewhere very far off to the left. I'd anticipate maybe one and a half times the actual uh, image width we're looking at here to the side. So we have to kind of imagine that our, uh, our first vanishing point is on the same horizon line behind the building, but very far this way. And this is going to require a bit more eyeballing than we're used to because most of the work we've done up till this point has actually been visible, like you've been able to see where the points start and end. And so this is going to be a little bit more challenging, but that's the reality of working with images where we don't have all the information uh, present. So we're going to make a couple inferences here, starting with the angle of the top of the roof. So basically what I'm going to start doing is trying to estimate where the bottom most part of the building and the top most part of the building are how they're angled relative to our vertical line, which we know is 90 degrees. So I'm going to start with the top because that's the most clearly visible and the one that's not really masked by the foreground. That looks like it's about, I'd say maybe 10 or 11 degrees if I were to draw from here, from this point. So I'd say that's about maybe 10 degrees. And I'd say this is maybe more close to, I'd say almost exactly 45. So we're going to treat that as a 45 degree angle. We're going to treat this one as a 10 degree angle. And so hopefully you remember your geometry from high school because that's going to be a little bit useful here. I'm going to guess that it, yeah, I'd say it ends right about here because the branch is a little bit above where the edge of the building is. I'm going to maybe adjust that a little bit higher. And we'll 
point. And that looks like we're kind of getting there. So I'm going to draw a line from the little point I made here to the top of our building. Now again, remember that our first matching point is not visible to us. Our second point, we have, we have the luck of that being clearly there, but uh, the rest is not clearly visible to us. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start just blocking in the um, building itself and what we know is there. So I know that this line keeps going here. And I know there's a large center bit, which I'm going to kind of mark here. And I can see on the right, we have five windows, two rows of five windows. Down. So I'm just going to kind of put dots. I know those are going to go. We have four windows here. We have kind of like a, a cornice going on the side of the building. I'm just going, going to go ahead and kind of mark off what that would be. Don't be afraid to make your drawing incredibly messy. I'd recommend using pencil to start and then pen to finish up if you want to do more shading. Uh, we have five arches right here. Just using basic counting to kind of fill in. Again, this is just very basic thing I'm going to change later. Looks like one, two, three, four, five. I've actually been to this building, so I know there are five, even though some of them aren't visible here, five windows that are right above these. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And four windows on the right there. So I'm going to say, yeah, one, two, three, four. And this part is going to come up a little bit. Make sure this is angled down a little bit. Now, of course, because our second point here is closer to the building itself, this is going to have much more dramatic effects of uh, foreshortening. So the, if we have a window here, that's going to be much larger than the window there, for instance. But here, you really have to be very um, aware of the subtle foreshortening that's happening because uh, we have much more area to work with here than here. This is getting stretched a lot more in our field of view than this uh, the front part of the building. So now that I have a basic gist of where all the different parts of the building are, are I'm going to start actually uh, doing some real more finalized drawing aspects here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make this look more like a building, less like a bunch of dots. I'm going to draw a very small line that's going down to this point from here just to show that there's a part of the building that's offset from the main the main fascia, or facade, excuse me. Fascia is a part of a roof. It's below the gutter. And I know these windows, there are four here, so I'm going to do that here. And I want to have that distance be a little bit more than here, because because this is protruding, this is going to be a little bit, it's not going to, like the actual wall would be here. So we want to make sure that is being foreshortened, and it's also appropriate to what this is concealing. So I'm going to erase that line because that would not be seen. And I'm going to put four more little basic markers of where I want to put the window later. Because I'm going to come back to this. So I want to make sure everything is clearly blocked in. When you're dealing with things that are uh, all equal in length, like if, if I want to subdivide this into an even number of things, I could do what we've done before in this class where I draw an X between two points and then find the, um, the center. And I'm going to do that because there are some elements of the drawing that are centered on the front of the building. But there are some drawbacks to this method. One such drawback being that we have five different elements here. So if I were to draw another x from this point to this point and make that a half, 
that's going to be, we have two elements sharing that. We have an odd number of total elements in the whole drawing. Uh, it definitely helps to have guidelines, but this is under a very uh, mild aspect of, uh, it's not being a foreshortened quite as much as this side. And I'll show that in a second as well. Draw a line that intercepts the X and stops the top of our roof. Same thing right here. And now I'm just going to erase these, uh, these X's. So these are no longer necessary. In fact, I didn't actually have to draw the X all the way. I could have just stopped in the middle, but better to have that go all the way. Better to be safe than sorry. So we don't have to redraw that. And now we have more of a, a stable grid we can use. So we know there's a large arch right here. And it's going to be one on each side of this. Make that a bit more even. These arches should be getting bigger as they get closer to our line of sight. I'm also going to add a little bit of an inside part here just to show that we're looking at something in perspective. And of course, as I went over with the uh, interior perspective drawing, because we're looking at an angle here, we're only going to have one line closer to us and two lines away because we're seeing the inside of this column, but not the inside of this because we're not looking through. If we had a single point here and we were looking through a column, then we would see something more like this. But if we have an arch and the point is not inside the arch, then we're just going to see the part that's being dragged toward the vanishing point, like this. I'm taking a small break just to show this because this is going to become extremely relevant as you start drawing more in-depth stuff, especially interior drawings, where tables and chairs are going to really, um, especially stuff in the foreground, is really going to define the whole painting or picture you're drawing. Which is an important thing to get down quick. I'm also making sure that as we get close to the bottom of the page, this is slowly getting pushed more this way. Because our horizon line is right here. So any line that's cutting through the building on this side is going to be straight. The same with this. I'm going to start working on the bay of windows just to give my arm a rest. Five windows on each side, and I'm just going to draw a line straight through the bottom of the building. I'm going to fix this line first because this is not straight. There we go. All right, very nice. That's going to be the side of all the windows in this bay. I'm going to do another one of those right here. That's our next bay of windows. And then I'm going to start right here. And these are going to be the uh, sides of our windows. Now I'm going to start drawing the horizontal elements. Keep in mind as I'm drawing that you want to add uh, room for the... Uh, we're going to erase this small bit in between just to show these windows have a beginning and end like that. I'm going to imagine my first vanishing point over here because remember we can't see it so we have to imagine it's there and draw appropriately. That doesn't look quite right. I'm going to change that a little bit. It's a lot easier to do this on paper. And I'm going to 
try the best I can not to erase the lines I've drawn. Just to show that there is a center bit here. I'm using my fingernail because this is so thin. And I'm also going to erase that center line between our base of windows. I'm going to use my index finger just because that's more convenient right now. Try very hard not to erase the corner. Okay, good. Get rid of some of that schmutz. Very delicate to preserve the shape of the windows. So I want to redraw that line. I think I might redraw those columns too, but right now I'm just going to finish all the windows. I'm also going to do that little, um, looks like there's a uh, stone like trim going around the side of the building near the top and it intercepts those top two windows. So I'm going to kind of draw that. It looks like it starts right about about here. I'm going to do that. And that's going to go all the way through the other side. And because it's protruding, I'm going to have a line that's going down to this vanishing point. It's coming up this way. And then, of course, that's going to go back down. And that should be a little bit above this one because it's, it's closer to us. It's protruding. So these lines should not be overlapping. They should, there should be a small gap between them. I'm going to do the uh, edge around the top of the building. And that's going to get pulled down to this vanishing point. There's a smaller one right here. I'm going to try to get that as well. It's a little bit thicker. And then, of course, that one's going to go up. Keep in mind that whenever the uh, this thing is changing directions, like when it goes out, it's going to be following this vanishing point, and when it goes this way, it's following this other imaginary man, advan, uh, vanish point we can't see. It's an important thing to remember. Also, with these windows, because there are windows on the other side that are on the same floor, and most floors and most buildings are 10 feet apart, we, um, we want to kind of mark that off also just for convenience. And you'll, I'll show why that's important in a second, because I'm just imagining where the floor level up is in this building. These windows are going to continue on this side as well. So while I'm doing this, uh, this trim around the side of the building, I'm also going to kind of start adding some windows on this side too. Well, that's going to be a, a semi-major project. So this one we already have our work cut out for us. But here, we want to make sure we're giving ourselves some kind of guideline as to where those windows are going to line up. Because the floor inside the building is going to come here and then, from our perspective, turn a corner, even though it's flat. We're looking at something that looks like it's turning a corner. So, I'm just going to kind of fill in these. Window areas. Now these are going to be very small because they're at a tighter angle, so we're not going to see as much of them as we would with these windows. I can just kind of raise these.
do the same thing again, a little bit further down and a little bit closer together. Okay, so foreshortening. This is very hard to do with pen or marker. We're going to keep this because that's actually part of the building. So there's one more visible bay of windows that we can see. I'm going to try to get that and then I'm just going to start improvising and drawing some trees because it's going to be very difficult as we get closer to this vanishing point to draw anything that's discernible as a window. It's just going to look like little smudges or lines. The thing is, those little small details are what make the drawing really count. So if you're going for an A, I would definitely add as much detail as you can, even if it feels unnecessary, because with drawing, really, this, there's just a lot that you don't, you're not really sure what's going to be necessary until after you look at the drawing. So it's better to do too much and then erase than to have too little. Uh, I'm just going to kind of draw that tree here, just kind of block it in. I'll do more shading in a minute. It's one big tree that goes kind of up here. Like that in as well. Alright, what else do we got here? Uh, Corner. I'm going to be careful not to make the line of the tree too uh, even because I don't want it to get confused and confounded with the lines of the building yet. Once we shade it, it'll be much more clear, but right now it's very important that these are two distinct elements in the drawing. This kind of comes out here. Careful not to add too much detail because I don't want to get confused with all the lines of the uh, building. Okay, and that looks like the uh, the top of that archway right there, where those uh, the windows start in the gray center part of the building. That uh, top line looks like it's about the third floor, so right about here. That's where I drew my little uh, my little guidelines from before. I'm going to continue where that is and just start. Making that look good. I might even double up the lines to add some thickness to show that that's like the boundary between floors. Again, this very small corner here that I'm doing is going to go to this side. Um, it's more important that you remember less of the things I'm doing specific to this drawing and more kind of extracting the uh, relationships that you'll see. Like it's important to relate these skills to to everything you see and not just this drawing because. After I'm done drawing this, it will be hard to remember exactly what I did, and it'll be better to remember kind of the gist of what I'm doing. If you're aiming to replicate this, this, um, this method. Okay, so that's done. Looks like there's a bit of more thickness than I anticipated in those columns. I'm actually going to redo these because those don't look very good. Columns are always a tricky thing, or excuse me, arches are always a tricky thing. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. I'm actually, I'm going to use the ruler so it stays straight. It's going to be our first arch. Can have a bit of a break in that. This is going to be the column in between. It's going to end right about here. The next column is going to start right about here. It's going to end maybe a bit further right there. 
column here, another column here. Making sure that each one is getting a little bit bigger than the last one. And then we're just going to... This is very hard to do freehand without a compass, but I'm making it work. Interior section to give it some thickness. Just to be clear, what I'm doing right here is I'm giving this thickness by continuing the arch back in space. So I'm offsetting this line a little bit and I'm adding an arch that kind of cuts off about halfway on the, the big arch to show that this, this is actually going back. There's real depth to it. I'm just going to kind of shade that in because that would be darker in real life because it's hidden from the light, the sun. If it's not clear yet, it'll become a bit more clear once I start shading the entire drawing. Alright, so looks pretty decent. I'm going to kind of continue this bush and make that darker. There's a big tree right in the center of the archway, but I don't want to put that in just yet because I don't want to ruin all that hard work I did. Just yet. Now I'm just going to quickly start drawing in all those little, uh, those little windows. I'm using a little bit less care on this one because I want to kind of get this ball rolling so I can start shading. I've got the space where my windows are. I'm just going to erase all this garbage. Guidelines. Careful not to actually erase the windows themselves. One thing that people don't really like about perspective drawing is it's a lot of math. Of all the art forms, this is definitely the most calculated one because there's so one little mistake and it just doesn't quite look right. And it's hard to explain why to a viewer, but. Artists could definitely tell you why. There's a column in between each of these. So I'm draw that real quick. Right now I'm just kind of winging it because it would take too long to explain every minute detail. When in doubt, if you're on a crunch for time and you can't figure out what's going on, it's better just to follow your instinct and just do whatever looks right. But if you can, it's best to try to follow conventional rules. These windows kind of have a bit of an inset area to them. But right now I'm just going to focus more on the shading of the ground. I'm going to get that shadow in.
gonna start shading this tree a bit. Forgive me for deleting half the building right there, but can't really see it anyway, so. This can just be chicken scratch. Dead trees are a lot easier to draw than live trees in my opinion. Especially pines, which that looks like in the distance there. There are a couple of really minute uh, windows right here, and it looks like they're following the same pattern as these. So I'm just gonna quickly do that because that is not the most important part of the drawing right now. But it is there, so I'm just gonna Quickly just ham that. And just to show that this is made of brick, and this is a thing that cartoonists do, if you want to show that something's made of material but you don't want to draw every little possible detail of that material, such as brick, which is a nightmare to draw, you can do this. So watch closely what I'm about to do here. Draw a couple lines. They don't even have to be congruent, they can be random. And you want to just make that look like brick, like a small patch of brick that got exposed after being covered with plaster or something, or asbestos, I don't know. Just do that. And it pretty much looks like brick. Like viewing that, you can, you can tell it's made of brick if you really look close. Uh, this building is pretty much covered entirely on this side by this giant invasive tree, so I'm just going to kind of do that. Draw some grass here. Also a cartoonist thing. Just three little stripes, and you know that's grass. These windows I did a little bit too quick, so I'm gonna go back. Let's fix that up. Doesn't have to be great, just close enough to a window that you can tell it's a window. Plus sign, and there you go, you got a window. The overall gist of the whole drawing is always more important than any small details, so if one thing doesn't look right, don't worry too much about that. Just draw a small little thing. The painters do this all the time. If something doesn't look good, you can just make it look really small or blurry or abstract or just erase all together. It's not too big a deal. My one regret about doing this on uh, with you know marker is that I can't really make the marker thinner. If I were drawing this with pencil, I would make these lines thinner, or excuse me, I'd make these lines thicker, and that make the lines further away or closer to this dot thinner because they're vanishing. They're getting for they're being foreshortened to this point from our perspective. So on pencil, I would take maybe an H B or a B, draw these lines. And as I get further away, I would use a lighter and lighter type of pencil to show that it's it's called atmospheric perspective, and you can see it in old like Renaissance era. Um, it just it's easier on the eye than having everything be an equal thickness, which is what this drawing is. But 
I'm just going to do this for now. Thicken the lines manually. Uh, you can see there's a bit of tree over here. Something that I've kind of come to realize is if you ever are in doubt in a drawing, you don't know what to do, just draw trees. And they'll look fine. No one's going to argue with a tree. Actually, I don't like these windows, so I'm going to cover those up with a tree. Anyone who knows Donato Grimaldi knows that when in doubt, add trees. There's an Italian architect that does that. He designs green architecture and he has these whole just giant uh, planes on top of the building. Uh, a whole section of the, the building is just grass and trees. I'm not quite sure how you'd irrigate that, but you definitely need with some coordination between the plumber and the, uh, the architect and engineers. Drainage, I've heard, is quite a big problem with those green buildings. But the outcome is definitely worth it because you have a green building, you get lead certification. It's all around good, better for the environment, fun, looks good. Doing more of that cartoonist thing with the, uh, the brick texture. It helps to do it at corners. Those corners seem to have more wear than other parts of the building for some reason. So I'm just going to do that. Maybe some right here. I don't like having too much empty space in a drawing, it just seems like it needs something. If you're like me, you like to fill things in. So I don't like having a void. Always better do something than nothing with empty space. I'm gonna make sure I give this tree a lot of room in the drum. I don't want to erase that corner because that corner is so important right there, but it's a lot of tree in the way there, so. I would say that's, oh, I still need to do this big, big giant branch. Exponentially smaller, let's get further away. railing here, which I'm going to add. That's going that way. So I'm going to have steps. And those steps are going to be pulled toward this vanishing point, like that. Minor detail, but still worth adding. A little railing down there. A little path. For one final touch, I'm going to add kind of a base to these windows. It's a bit of a sill on each, and that was kind of bothering me from the start. I didn't add that yet. Just 
i fyra på dobbe. Fix up all the little mistakes here and there, little errors. And I call that a drawing. That's a bit overkill. You don't have to shade your drawing as in-depth as that. But any detail you can add that you think is necessary, I would say go along and just go with it. And that's all I have to show for uh, that two-point perspective. So I'll leave that up for a bit. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. So Joseph will do one more perspective drawing on, uh, we're not done today, we'll do a little more of something else. But uh, Joseph will do one more on Friday of a library somewhere, but not ours. Maybe something with steps, that's a little tricky with, with ours. So um, thank you, Joseph. And then I'm going to grab the screen back here and now play something or uh, show you something. Yes. Mm -hmm. 